Hello everyone! Welcome to match number 31 of the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Highway to the Zemus Zone League matches. I'm your lovely co-commentator for today, Alexa LeFay, and joining me is... Silverfire, hi. Um, so we have here tonight, we have some of the, the top of the league here. Um, so Kabahi in the top left is uh, currently quite near the top of the standings. With a good place tonight, he will be at the top of the standings. Uh, we have uh, co-creator of the uh, ROM hack and uh, notorious uh, Rivers McCohn in the bottom left, who uh, is only at eight points right now, but has this and another race still to play. So he could also end up very near the top, depending on his placement. Um, then we have Aizen Tayama, who, with a good placement tonight, could uh, nicely lock in a solid advancement, uh, safe from even having to worry about tiebreakers. And then we have Kirchen, who's really, uh, really on the ropes right now. He's right at the cusp of uh, being it, making it into the tiebreaker matches. Um, so at only seven points and so but his uh his z score which is used for tiebreakers beyond that is extremely good so if he can manage to uh to get in under the uh to get those points that he needs uh he's in pretty good shape well i for one am rooting for final fantasy 4 as are many of you in the chat the randomizer always wins. Uh, our racers are going to be beginning in about five seconds. Oh, here we go. I'm so excited. I wonder who our second character is going to be and who's our key item going to be, too. Oh, our possible key item, I should say. Oh, I'm so excited. We will see. <laughs> and they're the off. Racers are off. Off like a herd of turtles. Ooh, Kane. That's a pretty you're pretty generally pretty happy about seeing Kane. And a and hook the right hook, off the bat. Oh god. Which is a mixed blessing. Uh cuz that hook gives access to uh the Eblan Cave, but it also might mean that that's the route to the underworld. Uh Eblan Cave does offer a character. Uh but fighting bosses fighting difficult bosses to get to the underworld changes the texture of the the seed significantly. Uh, generally called a hook seed, uh, when the magma key is not available and you have to go through Upper Babel to uh, to get the underground. And we see most of our runners, in fact, all of our runners entering Baron. Yep. No divergence quite yet, but we're going to take our first peek at the Baron in character, and it is Tella, highly acclaimed as the best character in the game. Uh, I'm just kidding. Tella's not so great. Hey, it didn't stop me from last time uh, bringing him to Zeromas with no other white magic caster. Ooh. <laughs> well, white mages are on vacation. Anyway, and so... And Tella, uh, I actually really enjoy having Tella early on in these flags, particularly, because it gives you a chance to, like, cast exit out of some places. And that's true, although so Baronin can be not actually that early, depending on uh, how far we see... They're looting all the stuff. The main reason you, you're really going to be looting all these treasures in Baron is mostly to fund your uh, early shopping. Absolutely. Because there's, there's a fair number of items like tents, life potions, um, possibly looking for equipment as well. But uh, you really need just a little bit of funds to get going. We see Rivers, uh, our first runner to die of the Damsian treasure vault. Picking up yep. a few treasures over there. Ooh, a charm rod and a change rod. Charm rod gives plus 10. And charm uh, rod's very good. Will, very good stat stick. Uh, term we also I saw them pick up a the mute knife, uh, which uh, does quadruple damage to anything that has a mage type to it. And uh, some decent mage equipment just in general. Poison axe, uh, okay. which is not mage equipment, but torso robe. Oh, mate. Poison Axe is 
pretty much the best weapon we've seen for Kane so far. So that's a pretty nice thing to see. Absolutely. Uh, it's interesting that some some people are checking these uh, missed village treasures and others are avoiding them. Uh, we saw rivers skip right past it, go straight to Damsian, while uh, Kobahi and Kir Kirchen both went into mist. Rivers activating the hovercraft uh, and Damsian, and then heading straight to the antlion cave. Gonna loot some treasure, see what that key item spot at the bottom has for us. He finds a flame spear and a black belt shirt. Those are both pretty nice to have. That's the second black belt, sh black belt shirt that we're seeing. Uh, there was another one over in Damsian. Oh, very nice. Those, you know. I love strength boosting. A lot of a lot of times you gen you generally see the runners will favor the strength boosting or otherwise offense boosting equipment over defense equip uh, defensive equipment. Gotta uh, go fast. And yeah, you, you gotta kill those bosses fast. If the bosses are getting fewer turns, you don't need as much defense. So uh, especially early game when your stat stats are pretty low, they can be very valuable. Um, Absolutely. Uh, Sil, do you want to explain how strength multipliers work? Uh, so, for most characters, every eight points of strength will be an additional hit. Uh, like, when when your character attacks, they actually hit multiple times. And so, doing additional hits will greatly increase the damage. Our runners uh, that dove... Uh, the Village of Mist, now heading into Damsian's Treasure Vault. Meanwhile, Aizen, Tayama, and Rivers are in the Antlion Cave. Rivers doing some equipping before heading into that boss fight. Yeah. Equip those Black Belt shirts like we... Also switching his characters a little bit. I like to think of them as dresses. <laughs> Ooh, another Poison Axe. And we have Valphalis at the antlion spot. Not oh, a terrible you know. spot to find her. <laughs> uh, Especially she's not, not with Kane. Kane in the party. She's not a lot. She's not very scary with Kane in the party, to be honest. No, certainly not. So, decent looks like it's just going to be there. two. Looks like it's just going to be two jumps from Kane to uh, take her down. Kobahi heading to Mount Hobbs. Going to check that character. Uh, up on the top of the mountain, guarded by a boss spot. Meanwhile, Kirchen, excuse me, Kirchen, checking out the Troria item shops. And we get the package under Valvalis. That is a key item and a potential character spot. Now, uh, runners sometimes won't go for the package right away. Why is that, Sil? Uh, well, the cutscenes associated with the package are pretty long. And then you, even mm -hmm. after that, you have to also fight a boss fight to get to unlock the character. So we not might see rivers. The, not um, to mention we, the countless innocent lives lost in the Village of Mist. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I don't think that's the the biggest reason why, why rivers may or may not choose to do it. it looks like he's going to go to Mount Hobbs first. Uh, it's the closer character spot. Uh, but uh, quick get up there. A lot of times we might also see the runners. Um, we might see the runners uh, save outside mist, see who the character is, and then like if it's someone really good, they'll go for it, and otherwise they'll just reset and leave. Kirchen yeah, Quake Kid, the Alan, uh, he learns Quake at 23, which is a very powerful spell for only level 23. Looks like he doesn't survive the fight, unfortunately. Interestingly, Rivers is just going to toss his Grimoire here, summon the Mist Dragon. Not a ton of damage out of the Mist Dragon there, but uh, well, and meanwhile we see uh, Kirchen. So it can, it can be a lot stronger or a lot weaker. His signature does... menu color change. Always <laughs> delightful to see. Yep. Aizen Tayama heading over to Mount Hobbs. I'm gonna be delighted to see Quake Kid up there. River's finishing up the Bygen fight. Yeah, it felt like he really Kobahi. saved some time by uh, by tossing out that uh, that Grimoire, even though it wasn't a huge amount of damage. Uh, because 
you know, he's done all of Antlion, and Kabahi's only done Hobbs at this point, and he's right behind, right on his heels. Absolutely. And we're seeing Rivers go to loot some of the, just one, just that one little treasure chest, uh, hoping to find some good equipment there. Usually you only see Mount runners Hobbs. get the rest of the treasures in Mount Hobbs if they have access to exits. Either the spell or the consumable item that mirrors the spell. And I believe we saw Kirchen pick up exits in the Vanilla Pass shop in Terroria. Which was why we're seeing him go pick up some of these treasure chests and find a cat claw for Yang. Oh, that is a cat lovely claw is item. A beautiful Use plus find. five so, to strength and speed. And like I mentioned, I mentioned earlier that everyone but Yang is uh, an eight strength for a, an additional hit. Yang only requires four strength for really? additional. Really, I didn't hits. know that. Yeah. Uh, so Yang scales off of strength much, much faster than everyone else. Uh, kind of build like you know plays around the fact that he doesn't get real weapons like his weapons don't actually have attack power they only have stats so and that's how rivers our first runner to head to it's the also Lord, that's also why yang unlike the other character like a lot of the characters in this that are not vanilla endgame characters uh, kind of drop off at endgame like edward for example as the most obvious uh example but uh yang is perfectly viable and in fact fairly strong at endgame because of that strength scaling rivers heading into the fabul gauntlet fight meanwhile kobahi finishing up that valvalis fight in the antlion cave getting some experience for quake kid and picking up his package aizen tayama heading over to the village of mist and kirchen doing some equipping Rivers finds the Dark Imps in the Fabul gauntlet spot. Not a terrible spot to find them, but definitely uh, a little dismaying because it means we won't find them a little later on. Uh, oh, those, those Dark Imps in some later on spots can be terrifying, though, because if they're in a spot with very high physical attack, they really hit hard. Absolutely. I've seen those do thousands of damage in the Leviathan spot. Yeah. Uh, however, they are subject to uh, some of the status effects like stop and hourglasses under these flags, which can make them easy to cheese. Absolutely. And we see, we see Edge at the package. Aizen Tayama, our first character to check them out. That is a beautiful find at the package, and absolutely worth the cutscene durations that, uh, that you have to deal with for this package character. Another interesting pickup is that dancing dagger that we've seen on some of on some of them, uh, really speeding up this dark imp, really sped up the dark imp fight for uh, for rivers, just tossing the dancing dagger instead of uh, casting spells. And we saw the Darkness Crystal. Hmm. Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, that's Darkness fantastic. Crystal. That gives us moon access. Interesting. They, this this creates a really interesting dichotomy, actually, because so they have, you know, they have the hook that they can use to get to the underworld, but they might want to just go to the moon instead because if the magma keys on the moon, they could end up saving all that time. On the other hand, those moon bosses are no joke, and they're still not very high power level. So it, we'll see what, uh, and it, this could be a big divergence in in how the different players route. Absolutely, and we have seen some of these riskier moon dives pay off for our runners in previous races. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how folks plan to do things here. And Aizen Tayama running into Golbez in the Kaipo Inn. Not a terrible spot to find him when you have uh, not so many characters in your party. Yeah. It deliberately kills off uh, Palum to uh, speed up this shadow cutscene. 
But yeah, this spot does not have very high uh, magic attack, which is really the scariest thing about Golbez. Meanwhile, Kirchen is looting the Fabul treasures. Kobahi is doing some inventory management on uh, item sales, and Rivers is checking out the Terroria uh, treasure chests and item shops. I also saw, I believe, both Kobahi and Rivers picked up some illusions. Uh, Ooh, which why are those important? So those cast the Blink spell, which can allow you to cheese physical bosses, uh, even if uh, there's like, even if they're not uh, vulnerable to things like Stop that we mentioned the Dark Imps. So uh, the Blink spell makes you automatically evade the next two physical attacks. Oh wow, that sounds really powerful, especially against like uh, those Dark Imps that we were talking about. If they yeah, show up in a bad spot. Or, uh, you know, Bygan's another one that can be scary, but we've already seen him. River's doing a quick Sand Ruby check and Kaipo item shop check. Uh, I believe that was Sid in the bed, sick with desert fever. Finds life potions in the Kaipo item shop. Oh my gosh, that is a delightful find to find early. And Aizen Tayama, armed with Edge, is going to pick up those life potions too. We've got some questions in the chat about the flags. Uh, so this does include the glitchless flag, which disables uh, some of the glitches that are uh, inherent to the, the Super Nintendo release of this game. Uh, notably, the uh, item duplication glitch, uh, which can let you get either a 255 stack or a enormous stack of items to sell, either sell for cash or uh, lots of throwables, etc. So that's disabled. The uh, MP Underflow glitch that uh, can give you limitless MP, uh, even such as to allow Tella to cast Meteo when he does not have 99 max MP. And the uh, Warp glitch in Dwarf Castle to allow you to pick up the, uh, the, Chris the item that's locked in the sealed cave without ever accessing the sealed cave. So all three of those glitches are... Um, are fixed. There's also the um, the 64 floor glitch as well has been patched over. Just want to um, cut in here. Uh, Rivers has activated the big whale and appears to be heading towards the moon at least to check the character. And Kirchen has ascended Mount Ordeals and is engaging the Baron soldiers in the vanilla Mylon spot. Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama is heading back to Baron. Uh, possibly to pick up Tella and pick up the key item spot there. And Kobahi is picking up his edge. Gonna face off against Golbez. Rivers checking out the Hummingway item shop. And I actually really like this play from Rivers uh, because this character on the moon, like even if you're just gonna get the character on the moon, it takes about the same amount of time as the Mount Hobbs character. So like if you want to pick up more characters, this is a great place to go. Absolutely. Plus, there could always be value at Cave Bahamut. I don't know if they're going to have the uh, strength to take on Bahamut right now, or whoever's at the Bahamut spot. <laughs> Here we see Kobahi starting his uh, Golbez fight. He and who's gets our moon character going to be? Kane up in the air, but Kane does not stay up in the air long enough to... Uh, And we to see start Quorum the on the moon dais. Oh, there's a white mage. Delightful. Delightful. Aizen Tayama heading into Fabul. Gonna pick up that darkness crystal. Kirchen getting back attacked by regular... You cut out there for a moment. Uh, the Kirchen getting back attacked by regular Mylon. So we seem to have lost Alexa for a moment. I'll just keep carry I'll carry on from here. Um, so I was saying that Rivers might not have the strength to uh, deal with Bahamut right now, but that's not stopping him from uh, 
from going through this place. Uh, meanwhile, it looks like Kirchin just finished up Mylon, and uh, we'll see what comes out of the uh, out of ordeals. We have Kenazo at the uh, so Rivers sees Kenazo and immediately gets out of there. Can't do with that right now. That's actually a pretty tough boss in a powerful spot. He's probably hoping for something quote unquote free that he could deal with uh, with some of those consumables that he bought. And let's see what this key item is. Oh my gosh, it's the pink tail. Guarded by Octomammoth. That's so silly. That is, uh... Certainly something. I'm just trying to figure out how those tentacles are sticking out of this crystal room. It's a very watery crystal. <laughs> a watery crystal. And... Kobahi finding the wyvern yep. at the Baron Guard spot. Well, that's a spot that you can just hit wyvern and it will die. Wyvern does know Mega Nuke on these flags and will open up with that, but uh, it doesn't really spot. matter when you just it doesn't really matter when you just one shot it. And Kobahi taking on the Calcobrina dolls at the vanilla karate fight spot. Not a terrible spot to find the Calcobrina dolls either. Uh, this spot can be tricky at uh, lower levels, and uh, the Calcobrina dogs, dolls, excuse me, dogs, uh, can be stopped. Uh, the yep, specific the saw ones in the back, and then the front ones uh, have lower HP. Yep, the, uh, we actually saw an hourglass used to stop those back ones, which will also incidentally keep the dolls from transforming into the one big doll which happens if you uh, kill all of one type, but not the other type. And we get a legend sword out of that. And so the legends were true. Ooh, meanwhile, we have uh, Aizen Tehama in a little bit of a tricky spot as uh, he did not throw that hourglass and big Calibrana is scary. I do not know if Edge can handle this by himself. Absolutely, especially that glance attack, which does a, a little bit of a confusion status. Uh, terrible to find, honestly, in uh, in this spot. But throws down a cure three and gets his Edge back up and standing. However, I don't think that Edge will be able to keep this up, unfortunately. Um, but we're all rooting for you, Aizen. Uh, meanwhile, River's taking on the Calcobrina dolls as well. Oh, and wow. Aizen pushes through. That is a, that is a incredible fight for Aizen. Really pulled it out from a scary spot. Uh, River's just drops a Gaia drum on the, on the dolls and uh, immediately clears the fight, though. No nonsense at all. Rewarded with a Legend Sword and a Tela. Meanwhile, Kobahi ascending Mount Ordeal's gonna pick up that pink tail and uh, be able to redeem it at the Tail Collector for a Adamant Armor later on in the game. Also will upgrade his Tela for the additional spells, which is Ooh. probably what's uh, incentivizing him to come here, especially when you, you're probably looking for either hoping to find a Magma Key or other major items before forcing yourself into the uh, Upper Babel to get to Underground. And it looks like Aizen is our first runner to go for at least the Eblon Cave item and character check, possibly even a dive into Upper Babel to gain access to the Underworld. Kobahi entering the Reverse Mylon fight. And Rivers doing a couple of checks to see if Derek Mist is hanging out anywhere on the overworld in the Vanilla Mist and uh, Octomammoth spots. That was Quickly Antlion. set out of Antlion over there. And we saw Baron Guards at uh, 
at the Miss Dragon spot, so... River's heading up Mount Ordeal is going to get that pink tail. Meanwhile, Kirchin picking up Porum at the Crystal Dice spot on the moon. Aizen Tayama doing a bit of shopping, and Kobahi finishing up that reverse backwards Mylon fight. So we're starting to have all the runners pretty much clear up all the available spots in the overworld at this point, and we'll kind of get a better sense of uh, who's ahead when they've finished that up. Um, right now it looks like uh, Kobahi and Rivers are in pretty similar situations, and then it's a little hard to tell with Aizen because he's diverged off to this uh, Eblen cave, but has not gone to the moon and has not seen Porum. Looks like Kirchen's going to check out Kaipo. And Kobahi is finishing up Mount Ordeals with that Octomammoth fight. River's doing some equipping. Thinks about equipping Tella. Decides that he's better off not being equipped at all. <laughs> Didn't really have a lot of spare equipment, and Porum was chosen to be the more the higher priority. Uh, I wonder why. <laughs> Quake Kid getting a Sorcerer Robe. Toss, uh, Rivers tosses an Hourglass, stopping all of the Baron Guards. Love Hourglasses. They're so useful on these flags, oh my gosh. He's also looking to milk the XP from this fight by throwing Life Potions. I uh, imagine that Rivers is planning on heading into that Hook Seed. I do that. Either whether he's going to the hook or the um, or the moon, he's going to need those levels. So we'll see what he chooses to do. He really wants to get that life potion up on the uh, the big one. Yep. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Aizen so Tayama the... fighting against the Staleman trapped treasure chest. Um, no doubt looking to get some XP and items as well. Kirchen checking out Silvera and Kobahi doing much of the same. Question from chat. Have we seen ethers or cabins at all? I believe we have not. We have seen tents. And I know Kobahi that, I know. redeeming that pink tail for the adamant. Yep. Uh, I know that uh, Rivers picked up a pack of tents. I think a, uh, several of the other runners did as well. Uh, tents were in the Baron item shop, so... Uh, so oh, I like did... the way you said that. Picked up a pack of tents. Yeah. Well, you, you bought like a ten pack. That's how they come, right? You just come in a ten pack. Ooh, and we see Rosa at the Iblon Cave character spot, giving so, Aizen the white mage that he needs. So Heading remember how there. I was talking about how he hasn't seen that forum on the moon, and that might put him a little bit in a disadvantaged spot? Not in a disadvantaged spot anymore. Rosa is absolutely the, the white mage you really want to see. Uh, she has better stats overall and learns several of the critical spells at earlier levels than than Porum does. Uh, Absolutely. And that's an thinking about getting rid of Quake Kid, dismisses Palum instead of Tella. Well, Tella does have his full spell list, and with the Darkness Crystal, that means Tella has weak. Yeah, I don't means, entirely disagree with that play. Which means he could use that for a moon or for a uh, Giant of Babel grind. Um... I would feel pretty dicey discarding either of them, mm. uh, so it's certainly a tough choice to make. I also want to point out that the uh, Rubicante spot boss, which is often a gatekeeper for the hook seed uh, type seeds, was the Dark Elf, which can be a lengthy fight and sometimes a difficult one with his breath attacks, but um, not terrible altogether. Yeah, Not also, uh, that, that weak spell comes into play against the Dark Elf, because the second form of the Dark Elf is uh, is vulnerable to weak. And Aizen leaving the Iblon Cave, no doubt looking to clear out the overworld before heading into 
the Upper Babel. Where is he going? River's finishing up Mount Ordeals. Miwa Kobahi is diving into Cave of Lawn. Gonna see that Rosa, maybe even head into Upper Babel. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, he picked up his adamant armor. Uh, he's in a good spot and has cleared out many of the spots in the overworld that are available to him. Um, Kirchen, meanwhile, is facing off against the Calcabrina dolls. Gonna be rewarded with that Lovely Legend Sword, just super useful. Um, hey, it's a key item. And it looks like Aizen Tayama is looking for a little additional loot before continuing on with this seed. River's powering up his Tela, no doubt uh, excited to do so. And... Uh, Leaving Mount Ordeals, let's see where he goes next, whether he decides to dive the moon or decides to head into the Cave of Oblon. I know that he'll be delighted to see Rosa there. Kirchen has to do with the uh, big Calbrana because uh, he wasn't able to uh, kill them all the, the, at sufficiently close together. Uh, may not have had an hourglass to throw at them. And uh, we see Kobahi dealing with those stale men as well. He's also going to end up finding Rosa soon. Uh, so it looks like we had two people went and saw porn on the moon. Two people are going to see Rosa instead. Shops looking to improve his gear choices. And Kirchen finishing up that Calcabrina fight. Meanwhile, Kobahi finishes up that Staleman fight. River's picking up that Adamant Armor, going to be useful for the rest of the seed, absolutely. Uh, Adamant Armor is the best armor in the game. Uh, gives you plus 15 to all of your stats and uh, super high defense. Kobahi picks up that Rosa and sees the Dark Elf. Is going to be faced with another decision. I wouldn't be surprised if Kobahi, given that he has an adamant armor in pocket already, chooses to go right up the, the tower at this point. I would agree with that. Uh, I'm curious as to who he's going to get rid of here. Uh, this is a tough choice. You've got pretty much the three best melee characters, and then you have Tella, Tella, who's weak, but has that spell list, and Palum, who has, you know, Quake. He's the Quake Kid. Um, now, I believe Kobahi has hourglasses, correct? And we're seeing a little bit yes, of... Yes, he, he has a pack of hourglasses. He has a pack of hourglasses, so he can potentially use hourglasses on the Dark Elf second phase to help ease the Dark Elf's transition into the Under Underworld. That was a bit of a stretch, but I mean, he's a long noodly dragon. What can you expect? Looks like he's also looking to uh, loot all these treasure chests. Uh, there's one of them that has a quad mad ogre fight, which you can also throw an hourglass at it. It's a pretty huge amount of XP. Uh, so it, it makes sense that he's really looking for that extra XP right before the uh, this boss fights. Uh, which should be enough to get his palum to learn Quake. Absolutely, really, and bring that Rosa really up gonna to speed the, as well. Yeah, also Rosa's still chilling at level 10, probably wants a few levels there as well. Absolutely. Rivers uh, making a similar dive into the Oblon Cave, and at this point I would safely assume that he's going to go all the way through Upper Babel. Aizen Tayama Activating the big whale, gonna check out the moon, maybe pick up that moon character, and Kirchen doing some inventory management. Picking up some strength rings, uh, strength boosting equipment is always appreciated uh, from the blonde cave shop, and is gonna head a little bit deeper into the cave. Meanwhile, Kobahi has found that mad ogre fight, gonna get access to some, a chance at some great gear from here, and that sweet, sweet EXP using the vitality glitch now silver wh why would we use life potions on enemies what does that do so it looks like it doesn't do anything it actually right. does bring the enemy back to life however what? 
Because all enemies have zero vitality and life potions res you with uh, an amount of health based on your vitality, uh, they actually get rezzed with zero health, immediately die again, and you get the credit for that kill. Whoa! That's awesome! But I thought this was glitchless. It's not covered by the glitchless flag, oh. uh, and it's generally considered to be a creative use of game mechanics. Uh, Supremacy also points out in chat, if you use life 2 on the enemy, it will actually res them with full health. I dis d discovered that, uh, much to my delight, uh, watching a video of Rivers's um, that he had posted, um, using that glitch to great effect on the moon to grind King Raiders. Bahi's actually considering who to put his adamant armor on, chooses not to put it on anyone. Uh, I believe we've seen, uh, uh, I've seen one runner put it on Kane, and I didn't see who Rivers put it on, if anyone. Heavy is the character that wears the adamant armor. That was a bit of a stretch, too. <laughs> River yeah, is I... delighted to see his favorite character in the game, Rosa, guarded by the, uh, uh, well, not really guarded, but facing the Dark Elf. And Kirchin fighting against those stale men with Atella taking a little bit of a nap. Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama has ascended Mount Ordeals, is gonna pick up that pink tail and be rewarded with an adamant armor eventually, as a result of his efforts. Kobani so kind of is the first runner to reach the boss spot, and we're seeing a moon boss at the King and Queen of Blonde spot. So this spot can be kind of tricky, and we see Ogopogo here. Oof, this is a tough boss fight, although they Absolutely. do have a good party for it. Uh, Ogopogo will counterattack all magic attacks with a nasty 25% of maximum health blaze. Uh, and also this spot, the King and Queen Eblen spot, actually has fairly high physical attack, and Ogopogo does use those physical attacks heavily in between the uh, the big waves. And it's really tearing his party apart. Ooh. He chooses to reset out before fully wiping. Uh, Not we might, surprising might at all. see him uh, leave, might see him try to grind. I'm not sure what he's going to do here. It looks as though he's leaving. Meanwhile, Kirchin and Rivers are heading into the same Ogopogo-laden storm that's awaiting them. Let's see how they fare against this gigantic serpent noodle. Yeah. This is where that Adam and Charmer could really come into play, though. Uh, Absolutely. Depending on, depending on who you give it to, you can have either a much easier or much harder time on this fight. Did Kobahi equip the adamant armor before going into the fight? I don't... I don't believe that he did. He he, he hesitated on putting it on Edge and then chose not to put it on anyone. And, like, this is kind of one of those times where you really need to, to commit. Like, this can this could turn out to be the, the quote-unquote true final boss of the seed. Uh, if it if it creates a big gap in the the amount of uh, a big gap in the time that the runners take to get to the underworld. Did Kirchin ever pick up Edge? I don't uh, Kirchin has not picked up Edge. Kirchin never checked his package. Interesting. Interesting. So it looks like Kirchin gave up Porum for Rosa then. So this is a slightly more white magic heavy party, and that could give Kirchin the edge that he needs to get through well, that. But he doesn't have fight. edge. That's that's the great. Sil, you you you're just the best. You're the best. Ten out of ten. Seventeen out of seventeen. <laughs> that was good good stuff. I feel adequately punished. Um. Anyways, uh, Kirchin and Rivers both in the four times Mad Ogre fight. Um, using that vitality glitch, taking also, advantage. Also, use. Uh, Kobahi going back using those illusions to uh, deal with the um, to deal with the physical attacks coming out of Ogopogo. I love how the blink strats came into play, uh, especially after you went to the trouble of explaining them. Um, so great to see! Oh my gosh! And we might see Kobahi push through. It's very likely here. 
Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama taking down Reverse Mylon, falling flat into the deep ravine. Let's hope he doesn't get back up. Gonna take on that Octomam and get that pink tail. <laughs> and we see Kirchin and Rivers doing some equipping and saving before heading down into the fight. And it looks like Kobahi has run into a tiny bit of trouble and, yep, takes the reset. No shame in that. This is a difficult boss spot to take over. Overcome. It's the second wipe to Ogopogo, unfortunately. River's heading into the Ogopogo fight. Let's see how he does. Immediately resets. Considering his actions... We'll consider this, that half of a half of a wipe. Decide oh, that's to what he's doing. Adamant armor and move the speed around. Uh, now, why would you move characters around based on their speed, Sill? Uh, so the when you don't have Cecil in your party, whoever the middle character is, the what we call the anchor of your party. Uh, the way ATD works in this game is it's everybody is relative to your party's anchor, including the enemies. Uh, having a slower anchor can mean that the faster characters in your party uh, get more turns compared to the enemies. Uh, and that's uh, that's why you see, you know, you put Tella in the middle sometimes, uh, depending. And we see Kobahi leaving the Ablon Cave. It's likely that he is either going to shop for more items, or he'll head straight to the moon and see what he can find over there. Maybe there's a, uh, a cheesable boss up there. Um, who knows? Uh, Rivers taking on the Ogopogo fight, and Kirchin takes... Ogopogo out immediately. Yeah, he actually put the uh, he put the adamant armor on Palum, and even though those counterattack blazes come out, you know the you get that fire resistance from the adamant armor. He was able to absorb that, and then Kane was in the air, so he was dodging some of those big waves, uh, and he was able to get enough damage down to uh, to just force his way through the uh, the massive damage that Ogopogo puts out. Kirchin certainly has everything to gain this match. Kobahi taking on some trapped chests in the Ablon Castle. Gonna potentially get some equipment and some more experience uh, for his trouble. Meanwhile, Rivers taking on the Dark Elf. Yeah, Rivers is on his... You know, he had that one quick reset, and then his second attempt went right through Ogopogo as well. Really um, shows his knowledge of the game. Yep, just had to move some equipment around once he knew what the boss was, and then he was able to handle it. Kirchin Those... using Quake Kid to great effect against the Dark Elf. Oh yeah, I and love putting... Kobai getting armor. rewarded with another Adamant Armor out of that one trapped chest. Wow! You know, after those two wipes to Ogopogo, that's the kind of thing he needs to, uh, to really have a good shot at coming back. An extra Adamant Armor. So Adamant Armor adds... Uh, over a hundred defense adds significant magic defense and magic resist adds resistance to all elements and adds 15 to all stats it is a monster terrifying stuff uh, now the catch about will he equip it somebody says uh, now, if you ever unequip an adamant armor because of the thing it, things it does to your resistances, it ends up glitching out, and that character permanently has negative resistances to everything for the rest of the game. That doesn't sound so pleasant. It's a little bit less pleasant. Uh, we see Rivers just drop that weak on Dark Elf second form. Uh, Kirchen's doing exactly the same thing. And they are both taking out Dark Elf very close together. 
I do love seeing runners like hand in hand. Like it just goes to show the the skill present among our runners in the round of 32. Just folks doing things within seconds of each other. Simply delightful to watch. Meanwhile, Rivers is party falling down what has to be several hundred feet. However, because we are JRPG characters, we can survive falls of infinite height. Kobahi taking out the three times Mad Ogre chest in the Iblon cave, and Aizen Tayama having dived the Iblon cave opts to keep Rosa instead of Palum, or excuse me, take Rosa instead of Palum and is taking on the four times Mad Ogre chest. Looks like uh, Kobahi's having a little inventory management break. Always nice to take a second and take stock of what you have in stock. Rivers and Kirchen activating the Falcon, which comes pre-equipped with a drill. A minor change from the uh, original game there. Normally you'd have to uh, complete the uh, sealed cave of uh, Bring Back the Darkness Crystal before that... Uh, that drill gets attached, but uh, it's part of the part of the delinearization that this randomizer does. It includes getting the drill right away when you go get the falcon. Uh, and we're seeing rivers go immediately to uh, land of summon monsters to get the free key item there, while it looks like Kirchin is checking shops, probably looking for the juicy things like those Bacchus wines in this shop, which cast berserk on your party. Berserk on one party member, that is. Oh, yes. Um, Aizen Tayama heading down into that Ogopogo fight. Um, and uh, let's see how they fare. Rivers finding coffins in the Land of Summon Monsters shop. Gonna check out that Ki uh, King Leviathan and Queen Azura uh, K2 key item spots as well. Maybe Derek Mist is hiding there, or maybe there's an easy boss um, to potentially exploit with some of those items. And Kirchen heading into the dwarf castle fight. And it looks like it may be the... I didn't see anyone pop up, so it might be the ant lion back there. Oh, no, it's Dr. Luge. Oh, my. He's creepy. Looks like we have Dark Cecil and Odin at the Leviathan and Ashura spots. Oof. Those are not fun bosses to see at those spots, that's for true. Uh, Dark Sea Slit is sure is survivable if you can get a Cure 3 off in between or so. Hmm. Um, especially with someone like Yang, who's a giant sack of HP. They only have... Uh, this is the no free lunch flag, but it's not M2, so they don't have to uh, kill him conventionally. They just have to take three hits, survive, and let the little cutscene play out. River is still looking for some items and uh, heads out of the Land of Stone Monsters. Let's see where he goes next. Meanwhile, Kirchen fighting Dr. Lugay and Aizen Tayama using illusions and taking on that Ogo Pogo. Kobahi putting that admin armor on edge. <laughs> still anyone's race here, folks. gets berserks up on his edge as well uh, to uh, really that's how uh, we saw the other runners really carve through Ogopogo basically just racing him down before he gets around to his spells again uh, meanwhile we have uh, Rivers did some uh, shopping and he's going up to Dwarf Castle again uh, Aizen's about to... Uh, Aizen takes down Ogopogo, about to go into his dark... And uh, Kobahi's at that point as well, so it looks like we might see another sync up between uh, Kobahi and Aizen. The uh, elements fight after the... Uh, shows up after the um, Luge fight as the uh, Golbez spot, which fortunately this spot has extremely low magic power, so these fire twos and fire threes aren't really going to be too damaging. 
Uh, so you see, um, some of the enchant mentioned, you see a lot of adamants on casters, uh, Palom in particular. So he's pretty slow normally, but, uh, magic, every four magic power is an extra multiplier for, um, for magic attack. So that's a pretty hefty boost to his magic damage, especially with spells like Quake. That's an average of like 800 damage that you're adding by equipping that magic, that adamant armor in addition to the extra speed, so he gets to get those quakes off sooner and faster. Absolutely. Oof. I love multipliers. I just have to say that for a second, that like the whole like eight strength for magic uh, thing, like like playing with the equipment and stuff, it really, it's really satisfying for me. And it's great to see our runners uh, play around with those things. We get an Excalibur from the Dwarf King and they've all jerk. gone they, well they've all gone through ordeals at least so if they find Cecil he'll be ready to equip that Excalibur and we might see some of them choose to take Cecil because of the power of the Excalibur absolutely Kobani to... and Aizen Tayama in the Dark Elf fight simultaneously meanwhile River is taking on the Dwarf Castle boss is going to pick up that Excalibur uh Aizen gets into his second phase of uh, Dark Elf, but unfortunately his Tela is down, so he's not going to be able to get that week off. On the other hand, Kobahi doesn't have Tela anymore, so that also isn't an option for him. However, both Kobahi and Aizen Tayama have hourglasses and are... Well, we see Aizen use one immediately, and it's possible that Kobahi will use one as well. Yep, and yep, we see Kobahi go for the hourglass three showing the power of battle items. Kirchen diving the land of summon monsters. Gonna pick up that twin harp. Uh, Do you think that we'll... So I, somebody in chat mentioned that they'd only take the Excalibur early game. Cecil gets too much agility at the end game to be a useful tank. I disagree. Cecil's damage output on Zeromus with an Excalibur and Berserk is bonkers. He's quite the damage dealer. He can do four to five thousand damage with an Excalibur, and if he's got the the Crystal Sword or the Ragnarok Sword, it can be oh my six God. to seven thousand damage. Yeah, that's seven thousand at Berserk strat it, speeds is just, like, you know it's ridiculous. Yeah, you're complaining about his agility, but honestly, when the only person you need in the party is Cecil, then it doesn't really matter. Huh. that his agility is a little bit fussy for Shot. for yeah. agility. Also pointing out something very important, that Cecil's very good because he can cast Cure 2. Kappa. Uh, Aizen, Tayama, and Kobahi just at around the same time breaking through into the underworld. And uh, River is doing a couple item, item shop checks, looking for some better gear. And it looks like Kirchen is going to check out who is in the Summon Monsters library awaiting us today. And it is possible that he might go save and take on that Dark Knight Cecil. In fact, goes for the Dark Knight Cecil. Uh, I may have missed him saving earlier, but we're going to see if this will pay off for Kirchen. And we see Rivers diving the Tower of Babel. Ooh, Kirchen uh, taking a wipe at Dark Knight Cecil and uh tries to uh tries to just get that, that cure off. Doesn't quite make it. Goes for another crack at it though. Yeah, um, he's got the cure three plus power of battle play here. Yeah. I think he likes to do it because nobody wants to do it. I think nobody wants to do it for good reason. I would agree with that. I think that Rivers also knows that he can probably execute it really well. It's true. And make up uh, for some of that has potentially the, uh, wasted time. certainly has the power, because this is a pretty tanky boss up at the top, uh, because the, the boss at the top has the uh, HP of all three Dr. Luge forms combined. Uh, so it can really take a lot of pepper to take out. Okay, looks like he gets the Cure 3 potion off before the uh, the Dark Wave kills Yang. It looks like this one will... Uh... Yep, there's Yang. So I'm excited to see what's... Clean 83 health. <laughs> what's at this spot? I'm really excited. I hope that it's like a, some sort of interesting key item that will open up things for us. Yeah. But we may see Kobahi and Aizen Tayama do much of the same. 
particularly Kobahi, who has a few more levels than the rest of our uh, runners did at this part in the game. And we see a power dress. Yes, I said dress. Uh, a useful item, particularly for Yang, who can benefit from the additional strength. However, not a key... ...king and queen at the top of the Tower of Babel, and is taking them on. Um... So we had a question in chat about uh, questioning ad putting the adamant armor on Yang for that fight against the Dark Cecil. I think that he chose to do that not because of the um, not because of Dark Wave ignoring defense, uh, but rather I think he had the ability to make sure Yang could get off Cure Threes in time because he did need to make sure that Cure Three goes off before uh, getting before more Dark Waves come through. Hmm. Hmm. We see Kobahi um, about to dive in, having done his save. Let's see if he decides to go for the Dark Knight Cecil fight. Looks like he's gonna... And River's getting the Luka... He's thinking. He goes for it. I didn't see how much HP his Yang has. 1600, so about the same. Just gonna throw the Cure 3 on Yang. Now, with a reasonable, R uh, good RNG, he should survive. We yep, see some Ether 2s in the Tomra shop. Useful item to have when you have some casters in your party, of course. And Kirchin doing the single Sylph Cave dive. I'm gonna go talk to Yang, see what Sheila has to give us up in the Fabul Castle. Kobahi getting through that Dark Knight Cecil fight with. His Yang with 140 HP left over, gonna pick up that power robe for his trouble. And Kirchin, no doubt, about to leave the underworld. Decides not to, last minute, decides to dive the Tower of Babel. Oh my. That was interesting to see. Meanwhile, we see Aizen Tayama looting some treasures, picking up a silk web in the Tamra item vault, and River's doing that sylph dive. Kobahi looting some last treasures before heading out of the Land of Summon Ma. So you know what we haven't seen any of, is we haven't seen very much in the way of uh, key items that unlock places. We've seen the, uh, we got the Luka key at Tower, but um, looks like most of those other key items, and possibly also Derek missed are all going to be hiding on the moon, it seems. I'm excited to take a look at that moon. I love the moon. I'm going to bet that there is some serious value at the wyvern spot. That's my call. Hmm. Oh, man. Well, I'm, I like to see what's, uh... What's, um... Sheila's holding because uh, she usually has the goods. Heal Yang to little effect, uh, showing just how much her white magic has progressed in the last few levels. Uh, we've got someone in chat, Almagus, um, rooting for the uh, giant, giant Babel of uh, Giant of Babel Demist. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna start rooting for that now. That's that's brilliant. I guess. Uh, the mist at the giant of Babel hiding a key item. We see I the dwarf castle and Kobahi taking on the Yang item spot. River's finding the Baron key at uh, Sheila 1, but opts to head to the Twin Harp location first. It looks like we'll be hearing music soon. Aizen Tayama about to face off against Dr. Luge. Meanwhile, Kirchin taking down the king and queen of Iblon. Using them cane swag chain strats. Oof. I just love it. Kobahi looting some of the dwarf castle. Gonna pick up some treasures downstairs. And... Rivers descending into the Magnus Cave. 
Meanwhile, in the bottom right, Aizen Tayama defeating Dr. Luge and Barnabas, uh, or Balnab, as he's known in this game. And Kirchen leaving the Tower of Babel with that Luka key. Let's see if he'll, he's our first runner to dive the Luka dungeon. Take a look at uh, what's, what's over there. Uh, I would sort of doubt it at these levels, but um, anything is possible in a round of 32 league match. Kobahi heading back into the upper world. Gonna likely pick up that Baron key. I'm excited to see what this uh, Twin Heart music is. Eyes and Tayama making quick work of Luge 2. I'm gonna face off against that uh, next boss there, uh, which I believe was Rubicante. And uh, Kobahi also making the Twin Heart play. Meanwhile, Rivers has gotten down to the Dark Elf spot in the Magnus Cave. And Kirchen making that Luka Key dive. Oh my gosh. I am. Yeah. Really I'm, excited I'm to see that. Since you, you did mention the envelope levels. Uh, Kirchen is the one... No, Kirchen's not the one with two adamant armors. But um, I wonder if we see him pick up a trapdoor or two for extra experience before facing the boss. Or maybe check what the boss is first and then decide if he wants to grab a little XP from the trapdoors, which have pretty huge amounts of experience. That's a, a, a really good point there, Sil. Um, meanwhile, we are about to hear the value in this league match in Edward's song. <laughs> oh my. Uh, I love Undertale. It's so good. Uh, I actually so only recently here. played Undertale. How did you like it? I, I rather liked it. Nice. Me too. It, uh, it really uh, it affected me in a way that few games have. Um, and I really appreciated that about the game. Um, we're seeing Rivers about to find out who that boss is. And he changed indeed into the Water Hag. Now seeing that blue robe cloak, cloaked figure is often a little uh, alarming for a runner. Um, because it could be the uh, Fabul Gauntlet. Um, or it could be the Water Hag. So it could be a boss you can somewhat easily cheese on these flags. Or it could be a boss that will just take a bunch of time but be super easy. Although there's a couple spots where the Fabul Gauntlet is not easy. Uh, Absolutely. Such as yeah, Leviathan or anywhere with those huge physical attacks, Leviathan, Wyvern spots, etc. Because uh, they usually we... will get a turn or two at the very start of the fight. Plague, on the other hand, in... Uh... So we see some interesting strats here on Plague. Uh, we see Palin casting Virus on Tella. And this is going to be leveraged to um, make Plague restart the count, because if somebody dies and then is rezzed, then Plague will cast count again, which re resets everybody's counter back to 10. And at this point... He reflects a count as well. Oh yeah, the wyvern, wyvern himself is dead. I was I was referring to the wyvern's uh, boss location, which has a very high physical attack value. But you're right. The wyvern dream of wyvern suddenly showing up and wiping somebody's party is in fact not going to happen. I'm excited for this barren waterway dive. Yeah. Looks and like Rivers actually, is still picking up treasures. Yeah, there's actually two spots in here to uh, fight. There's not only the barren, the the fake Baron King, there's also the uh, Odin fight as well. Both of those offer key items, so that makes it a pretty valuable, uh, valuable play. In addition to having a character spot, which, you know, they might, might be someone like Fusoya that uh, edges out that Tela that they currently have. I am uh, also really interested to see what this pan holds for Kirchen. Mm hmm. Yeah, that pan, that's actually two items as well, just from the pan itself. 
Uh, this is a long fight for him, though. Uh, I don't think he got any Berserks off either, so... He's really going to take some taking, time. Let's, uh... Taking it slow, but making making it uh, slow and steady. Considering Kirchen's standings, uh, this is perhaps the kind of play that he feels like he needs. Uh, meanwhile, River's fighting Mylon Z in the vanilla Bayan spot, and Kobahi picking up that Baron key. Uh, Plague being virus down is a little ironic, in my opinion, <laughs> uh, just because of the naming convention. And uh, River's taking down Mylon Z, uh, taking a moment to mourn the dead, already dead, and uh, heading straight into the Kainazo spot, boss fight. Let's see who we'll find there. And it's the Mega Sisters. Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama heading into Baron and Kobahi close behind. Kirkman's still plugging away at that Plague. No, uh, at some point very soon, Plague is actually going to uh, just die from that count that was reflected on himself. Uh, it does get reset every a uh, little bit, so... Would you say the... that you're counting the moments until that happens? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely... Oh my gosh. River is quaking down the Mega Sisters. I have to admit that, like, even as a kid, I really didn't like the Mega Sisters. I thought that they looked dumb. I uh, really didn't like the boss fight a lot. And uh, oof, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to fight you on this one because the Mega Sisters are some of my is one of my favorite uh, like boss designs from this from pretty much any of the retro Final Fantasies. And we see Uncle uh, Ma, uh, and that's cool. We can totally. You know, have our own preferences. Uh, uh, we see Uncle Mop replacing Tella just like you predicted, Sil. You're so good at that. I'm so good at this game. I think so. And Aizen Tayama facing off against the Mega Sisters, meanwhile Kobahi taking on Mylon Z. I'm not sure what happened with uh, Kirchen's fight, but it looks like something went a little south. Uh, it looks like uh, some of his characters may have ran out of MP. Looks like, some uh, of looks like he needs to get a life a out off really quick. Being and meanwhile, alive. Rivers is heading down to that barren key item spot with Kobahi and Aizen Tayama not too far behind. And we find the Sand Ruby, a key item. Um, we know that Sid is behind it because of uh, Rivers' check earlier in the run. And we get the count reset. Looks like he might, Kirchen might leave Kane dead for a little bit. Aizen finishing up that Mega Sisters fight, and Kobahi uh, gonna likely leverage Qu Quake Kid. It looks like uh, Rivers is heading down into that uh, Odin spot. Gonna see what's down there before heading to the moon. It's interesting to me, Sil, that none of our runners have opted to go to the moon yet. I do find that interesting. Uh, usually pretty like binary decision and it has a lot to do with like the power level of your party mm, um, agreed. without you know without a really powerful magic caster it can be a little risky to uh go to to make the jump to the moon absolutely and it looks so, like Fu will give up you know, that fuso it might be the thing that they want before going up to the moon uh but at this point you might also see the players choose to commit to clearing out what's left on the on the blue planet and I'm not really sure how the uh, count on Plague works. It's a little complex. Um, but Kirchen does take out Plague. And... Um, starting to warp out with Palum. Meanwhile, we see uh, the Odin spot uh, go down for Rivers. Um, some people in chat pointing out 10 key items being a good time to go up to the moon. Yeah, that's that's a good point. Although, 9 key items is super awkward. Fortunately, Rivers does get a 10th from this Odin spot. Uh, 9 key items is super awkward because you never really know quite when you're going to get that 10th key item. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to go find out what uh, the Sylphs have and then what Sheila's second item is. Uh, which could be a big, 
uh, big game changer for Kirchin. It would be really interesting to see the pass there. At if least the crystal. Think. If the crystal's on the moon, that pass is only doing so much work, though. That's a very good point. On the other hand, if the crystal requires, you know, going to the moon, and then coming back with the earth crystal or the tower key or something, you know, that pass can really start having a lot of, a lot of work. Ooh, and we see the rat tail as the sylph spot key item. Uh, that could be potentially really, really a game changer here because we have also uh, the rat tail's key item and we have the two Sheila items. Uh, this this is uh, really interesting because we know Baron Key is another key item there. Um, it's also, put, we'll, we'll end up putting Kirchen at 10, I believe, from, uh, from Sheila's stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that Baron Key will put Kirchen at 10. This is really interesting. Kirchen switching out airships. I always really enjoy flying around in the Enterprise. Um, gonna pick up that hovercraft and turn in that rat tail. Ooh. Value? Value at... at the sealed cave? Let's find out. Uh, Aizen Tayama finishing up that Yang fight, picking up the spoon for his trouble. And Rivers diving the sealed cave. Interesting. And we see a ninja shirt from that rat tail. However, this is not over yet. We still have to see the second Sheila item. That's a bit of a, a womp womp, though. No, oh, definitely. Yeah, it was kind of hype. I, mean, I got really hyped when I saw I that think rat he's tail. Also, I think he's already... Uh, like he does, is he the one without edge? He is the one without edge. So, like, he doesn't even have edge, and he, uh, he has a ninja shirt. Sad face. River seeing that pan. And Kobahi. Uh, gonna pick up the rotten shrimp. I mean, the big whale. Uh, I'm betting Kobahi's actually gonna commit to the moon here. I think of, so. Uh, yeah, I think it's time we see what's in, uh, to Continuing the search of spots and... What? He's in the underground? I'm, I'm right here. Honey. Honey, I'm here. And it's the pass! Oh, You called it! Still, you and I have both been pretty psychic about this run. I'm telling you, value at the wyvern spot. That's where the crystal is. I don't know, I thought we were, I thought we were going for, uh... for... Demist in Giant of Babel. Ooh... That is... that would be lovely to see, especially in this, one of the last two round of 32 matches, where everything could be riding on that, uh, Giant of Babel decision. Although I fully expect our runners to fully clear the moon before heading into the giant of Babel for that. Nobody has in, in, that's correct. Nobody has actually fought uh, Leviathan yet, uh, who is uh, Odin. That's actually going to be a really tough fight because Odin really likes to spam those physical attacks. That spot has a very high strength to it. Absolutely. Uh, those illusions might come into play there. Yeah, the illusions and the adamant armors will come into play for sure. Uh, it's also Kirchen. very much a DPS race because uh, those those Zanset Sukins are uh, are no joke either. Absolutely, absolutely. Particularly with Leviathan having not a too shabby magic power, what to use those Ice Twos with? Kobahi diving into the Crystal Palace, gonna take a quick rest in the berth on the big whale. Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama has also gone to the moon and is looking for a little value in Cave Bahamut. Rivers taking down Plague and Kirchen, gonna take on the Baron bosses, pick up a spoon, possibly, and uh, Fusoya for his trouble. Kobahi gonna see Porum up here in a few You minutes. know what we haven't seen all see the sirens. Hmm, very true, very true. I don't know how thoroughly everyone's checked, but I think among the runners, I think that most of the, that almost all the item shots have been checked, if not all of them. I don't think we've seen a guard yet, have we? Uh, I believe that I uh, remember one of the runners. I don't remember which one did land at a guard. We did see a guard. Okay. Um, this could be a sirenless seed. Yep, it happens. And it could I like, make I that like giant that. Babel uh, play viable if they're going up there for the demon machine grind. Particularly with our runners, some of our runners heading into the sealed cave and opening up some of those all too important to a grind doors. 
Kobahi heading into the Crystal Palace and looking at that Pale Mist spot, it looks like. Uh, pale, pale Dim, excuse me. And Aizen Tayama facing off against Kainazo at the uh, Cave Bahamut spot. Let's see who's waiting at the Pale Dim spot. River's giving Yang a quick bonk in the Silk Cave. No doubt delighted to see that. Oh, excuse me, he hasn't dived there yet. Got a little ahead of myself. But he'll be delighted to see that rat tail and then crestfallen when it contains a ninja robe. And we see a uh, vanilla pale dim here. So uh, I don't think that I've ever seen that in a free enterprise scene. Yep. A chat pointing out that vanilla is pretty pale. I don't know. Vanilla beans aren't very pale. No, they're 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 uh, black as my heart. Uh, we see some uh, black magic happening in chat mods. Could you take care of that? Uh, ooh, that's some sorcery down there. It's terrifying. Um, do do do. And we see Aizen Tayama taking advantage of Kainazo's weaknesses, uh, using Ice Three to the tune of eight thousand damage um, with Fusoya um, when he doesn't have the water. Oh, thank you for the subscription, uh, Takaze TV. Meanwhile, River is going to turn in that pan. Kobahi taking down Pale Dim. Let's see what he finds. The Magma Key. Oh my yeah. gosh, that is super yeah. useful. Yeah. It's a key item. You know what's interesting oh, is that seeing that there is actually terrifying because he doesn't know that other other runners may have bypassed those uh, that Ogo Pogo fight that he wiped twice to. Mm. He can't feel good about seeing Magma Key. Uh, that is, how, on the other hand, his 10th key item. Uh, Which so will double we'll be, we'll be getting some pretty massive XP from the future moon bosses. Particularly that uh, sweet, sweet D-Lunar spot, which has uh, 100,000 XP base and 200,000 uh, with the uh, doubling effect of the 10 key items. Um, Kainazo taking a little shell dive. We're about to see what the Cave Bahamut has for us today. Kirchin gonna check out what's at the Odin spot. Um, Rivers picking up the Enterprise, gonna turn in that rat tail soon. And Kobahi making a dive deeper. <laughs> Let's see if he goes to Wyvern first or the D Lunar spot. My money's on D Lunar, just because of the odds, but uh, uh, who knows? Oh, I'm so excited to see what this key item is at Bahamut. And we see the Adamant, uh, a rock, but not the right rock. Uh, unfortunately. Especially when you already have an Excalibur floating around. Not really something I'm excited to see. No, um, although it does... Let's see, that's... That puts Aizen closer to 10 key items. Um, and that's one less spot that we'll have to check. Um, and a little bit more experience to help his party survive the upcoming trials and tribulations of the Lunar Subterrain. And yeah, it looks like Kobani's to... gonna be heading towards that D-Lunar spot. Yeah, and if uh, if Aizen goes to uh, Pale Dim spot next, then uh, he will get his 10th key item there. Mm, um, like Kobahi, Kobahi is definitely looking like he's in a lead. On the other hand, Rivers is committing to his grind now with 10 key items. Uh, so that could accelerate his Lunar Clear when he comes up here, with him already having all, this, all the uh, levels. On the other hand, he might end up... Uh, spending a little more time leveling than everyone else who's gaining XP as they go. Do you think that Rivers is going to check the bosses? I certainly think he's going to check the first boss. I yeah. do not know if he will commit to checking the CPU boss. I don't think that he will. I mean, the element spot has so much HP. It's just such a time sink for something that like won't necessarily pay off. I mean, he's got a good party. He's going to commit to his grind. Um... But it it really is a really is a, a, a toss up until we see that uh, that that wave collapse. Um, Kobahi taking on the CPU at the D Lunar spot. Uh, this is sort of an annoying spot to find the CPU, but not entirely uh, one that you can't really deal with. Kobahi gonna try to reflect float onto the orbs so that he can quake the CPU down, um, getting under that eye. reflect, and he gets it off. He gets it on the ideal target, the attacker. So now when he quakes. The attacker won't get uh, destroyed, and he'll be able to just quake for full damage on the uh, 
on the CPU. Kirkton heading to the moon after clearing out that Odin spot. Let's see where he goes first. Eisen Tayama diving deep into the Lunarian depths. Rivers looking for that grind fight. There's a little bit of, uh, of manipulation you can do to know when you're going to encounter the, uh, the D-Machine summoning a searcher. Uh, it looks like it's this one because he's not running away. Absolutely. And Kobahi going to be quaking that CPU down. Mm. I love seeing quake strats with floats uh, on, uh, on the CPU. Uh, it's so refreshing to use quake and not fear that global 99 spell. Um, and it looks like Kirshen is diving into Cave Bahamut looking for some value. Uh, unfortunately, we all, we already have seen that, um, that that does not contain the rock that we are looking for. Uh, Rivers, uh, with his grind in full swing, casting weak on his first D machine, gonna take it out and, uh, start his grind. And it looks like Aizen Tayama is heading into that CPU fight. Kobahi chugging away at the CPU, and, uh, Kirchin taking on Kainazo. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm hoping that the crystal is at the wyvern spot, but I'm also really hoping that it's behind the, the mist dragon, which is at the top of the giant of Babel. Like, there's a sadistic part of me that really wants that to happen. Uh, so we see, uh, like I mentioned earlier, those life potions that res enemies with zero health. It actually gets two of them off on the same one before uh, it manages to, uh, before the, the animation for the killing it goes off. Hmm. Because you do yeah, have to clear nice those out before it completely dies, or else you can't target it anymore. Um. Now, where does this grind come from, Sil? Like, what? This, this... So this is this is actually the grinds that that players do in the vanilla speedrun of this game. Ooh. So Rivers is very practiced at this, and this is even a very similar party to what you have in the vanilla game, where you have food. Uh, Rosa can keep people patched up pretty easily, but also can reliably uh, hit the searcher. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I gotta love that aim command. So useful. Um, I also really appreciate uh, Yang's power command, too, um, on the, the J2 flags. Uh, nice ways of wow. getting around. He's already, things already that finishing up that fight. He didn't even have to go through very many cycles with the, uh, getting the... the the turn synced up so he was actually getting two life potions off each cycle. He only had to go through a few mm. machines. He's already done. Palin has no finishing up the CPU fight and finding a couple of really good weapons for Kane and Edge, but no key items. Gonna take a quick save and then check out who is in the plague spot. Um, but he did find the Murasame and the Gungnir spear, which are just like super weapons. Uh, great you're certainly, you're guys. certainly not unhappy to see those. No, definitely not. But definitely after not. the amount of time that you spent on that uh, that CPU fight, you kind of want to see the crystal. And uh, Rivers Which not checking Rivers the boss in the giant of battle. We'll see if that bites him. No, he didn't even check the first boss. Oof. That is. Ooh, and we see Demist at the plague spot. Ooh. <laughs> oh, well, never mind. Now you playing in the giant. Uh, Kirchman finishing up the kind of as a fun, getting rewarded with that hunk of adamant, which won't be seeing cockles forge today. And uh, Aizen Tayama plugging away at the CPU. Uh, Kobahi throwing a few nukes at the, the Derek of Mist and uh, tossing a silk web to slow him down. We really don't want to see more than a couple cycles of that uh, freeze you with breath turns into mist nonsense that uh, Derek is known for. Meanwhile, River is going to check out that uh, Dark Knight Cecil spot that he left and that Odin spot, armed with his grinded levels. Yeah, this is a big reason to, to do the grind before going up to the moon, is that this Leviathan spot in particular is a very powerful spot. Um, and getting the chance to, to clear it before going up can really put you in a good spot. Hmm. Uh, Agreed. If it... You know, if this turns out to be it, then you've done it. Even if you do go up to the moon after this, he's going to be going through those moon fights much faster than uh, than Aizen and Kobahi and Kirchin have been. 
because you know he's got two nuke casters he's got white on rosa and he's got an absolute powerhouse yang and uh kane is still looking for a better weapon but is pretty strong then you might just find that kane weapon with uh with the cpu and even more incentive to go back to the earth it is the earth crystal um, hiding behind Demis. Now, we'll see if Kobahi heads into the Wyvern spot just to clear out the moon um, and check out checks out the Ogopogo spot. Um, I would be surprised if he'd left the moon without checking those. However, it is not unheard of, particularly on these flags. Although, having said that, what do the flags have to do with that decision? Well, I mean, they are K2 flags, at least, so... Yeah. That does affect your decision-making on, like... Still, did you know that justice is not the only right in this world? Someday, I'll notice. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, and we are seeing Kobahi head to that Ogopogo spot. Let's see who's there. Curtain facing off against Pale Dim, and Aizen Tayama still <laughs> plugging away at that CPU. Now, this spot does have a lot of HP, so... So Rivers did something pretty interesting there at the end of the uh, fight. When he got that power share, he just immediately hit the reset button. Uh, just because he decided it would be faster to uh, do that than to heal up. Smart man. Uh, faces off against Odin, knows exactly what he's up against here, and uh, no doubt is looking to use nukes on Odin. Despite Odin being weak against uh, lightning, uh, nukes will go off a lot faster since they have a spell delay of zero. Uh, Kobahi finding the Fabul Gauntlet at the Ogopogo spot, not a terrible boss to find at this spot. Also, Yang has a uh, Thunderclaw, which, you know, he just Berserk attacked for 9,000 damage as well. Delightful. This, this Odin is not long for this world. And we see Odin raise his sword, but not soon enough, and Rivers takes him down. Let's see if there is value at Leviathan today. Ooh, and we see a weapon for Kane. However, it is not what... Rivers wanted to see Wow, it doesn't takes even... Takes the reset. Takes the... I don't agree with that. Oh, but he's just loading his other save slots so he doesn't have to fly out of the underworld. Okay. Smart man. Using the you know, saves. That's, that's We've like seen him leverage this for wins and races a, before. He's saving oh, oh. maybe a minute at the cost of a white sphere. I guess I can see it. And he heads straight to the moon, straight to the Bahamut cave, looking for a little value. Kirchen heading down into the lunar subterrain, gonna check out that CPU spot first, most likely. Tobahi plugging away at the blue gauntlet. So Rivers, uh, Rivers saved after doing his Giant of Babel grind, which is where that save spot on Earth was. Chat pointing out that it's likely that Kobahi will not need to grind, considering that he got up to 10 key items before heading down into the uh, depth of the lunar subterrain. Uh, Rivers gonna fight against Kainazo. And Aizen Tayama plugging away at the CPU. Kirchant heads off to the plague spot first, interestingly enough. Gonna see D Mist and get that Earth Crystal there. Uh, and Kobahi. Fighting against the Fabu Gauntlet. So, what? Where do you think the crystal is? I'm gonna guess it's a that Earth Crystal. Hmm. Or the Earth Crystal will have the Tower Key. Hmm. Because we're starting hmm. to run out of spots to. We really it. are. Uh, so it's either that or it really is Mom. Kobahi finding the Leviathan Summon at the Ogopogo spot, that's sort of flavorful, and uh, is gonna head back into the Lunar Subterrain, and uh, it looks like he's heading to the Wyvern spot, because um, he's cleared everything else out and he hasn't exited out uh, immediately upon entering back into the Subterrain out of the core. That is a lot of walking when you could be casting the Warp Spell, though. Hmm, agreed, agreed. Quite a lot of walking. Um, Aizen Tayama fighting against the CPU, a valiant fight indeed, and Kirchen fighting against the, the the scourge of the Mist Cave, Derek Mist. Um, Kobahi heading into that Wyvern spot, let's see if he proves my prediction correct. 
takes a second at that treasure chest, thinks about opening it. <laughs> what do you make of that, Phil? Um, so these treasure chests have a pretty high chance of being trapped. Mm. Uh, it's always a little bit tempting to open them anyway. Super tempting. The experience uh, alone is, is reason enough. I mean, those red yeah. dragon fights can give like 200 experience without using the life glitch. Yeah, uh, you actually can't, you can't use the life glitch on them because they're boss flagged and you cannot Oh, I boss. didn't know that you could use it on boss flagged enemies, but that makes a lot of sense. Um, Kobahi finding Leviathan at the Wyvern spot. This is not a terrible spot to find Leviathan because the magic power is so low and all of uh, Leviathan's Ice 2 spells are, of course, magic dependent. Kirchin facing off against the CPU and Rivers making that first dive into the Lunar Subterrain, heading to that Manila Pale Din spot. Kirchin taking the reset at CPU. Not an uncommon thing to see. And it is one of the slowest boss fights in the game. River's about to enter that Pale Dim fight. Rosa busting out a Cure 4 on Kobahi's screen, and Yang attacking with, uh, no doubt, a Thunderclaw equipped and throwing down 5 grand damage. Oh my gosh, that is a delightful amount of damage to see. Um, and really showing the power of Yang once he gains some levels um, and gains a lot of strength. Takes down Leviathan. Let's see what is at this spot. Uh, Kirchin heads to the Ogopogo spot and starts fighting against the Kulu Mauntlet, and Rivers is taking on Pale Dim. Uh, I believe Kobahi is Avenger. Ooh, interesting. Interesting indeed, but it's not the crystal. It's really not the It's very not the crystal. It's super not the crystal. And the crystal is in fact back on Earth, either at Rydia's mom, or at the Ear of Crystal. Or one of those places will have the tower key and it will be there. I'm hoping that it's at Rydia's mom. We haven't seen Derek get a whole lot of love lately. But um, my mom's dragon fell, and then she did too. Too soon. And on Kirchin's scene we screen we see Quake Kid leveraging his talents against the Fabul Gauntlet, which has somehow find its found its way on the moon, and Kobahi heading straight to the village of Mist. Uh, Rivers does not have the pass. He didn't uh, turn that stuff in, I don't believe. Does he have Yeah, I don't believe that he turned in the pan, he just went straight to the moon. I didn't even... I don't remember him doing... Tower Key. Yeah, there's the Tower Key. Well, that now, could be it. Now, has a decision to make here. Has he done the Vanilla Tower? Hmm... I don't think he did. I don't think did. that he has. Which could mean, yep, it's leading him astray, unfortunately. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, he got the, uh, well, the Luka Key. It might, on top might of the not tower, be that astray, because it could still be the Super Cannon. It could, it could. Um, but it might take him a little bit of time uh, going to the tower and fighting the Eblon King and Queen. Although that spot not only has a good chunk of XP, but he also has higher levels from having taken on the moon bosses. River's heading into the Wyvern spot. I'm gonna pick up an Avenger. That is true that the Luka Key could lead him astray. Although at this point, I think, you know, if it... You might gamble that it's not going to be the Luka Key based on the information that nobody has not done yet. <laughs> and therefore, this thing that's been lying around that you could have done a long time ago, you can, like, maybe make the assumption that somebody else did do it and it didn't work. This is also assuming that Kobahi leaves IRC up while he runs. Um, and many of our runners do not. That's true. Um, so we'll see. He's going for that King and Queen of Blonde spot. Um, Edge is equipped with an adamant armor, so is well equipped to destroy his parents in battle. And uh, Kirchin using some coffins on the uh, Ogopogo spot bosses. And Rivers using that Thunderclaw to great effect against Leviathan. Meanwhile, Aizen Tayama has finished his CPU fight, equipped his Edge and Kane with their new weapons, and is taking on the Demonist. Now, it looks like Kobahi is a little bit in the lead here. Um, however, the Luka Key could lead him astray, uh, awry if he finds it here. 
Rivers taking down Leviathan, or as I like to call him, Leviathan. Uh, um, <laughs> chat question in chat: Did Kobahi check the b b the vanilla Bahamut spot? Um, I don't believe that he did. I believe he left the moon without checking Bahamut. Now, Rivers is not interested in any of these side items. He's just reset out of getting the Avenger sword. He's hunting. He's on he the is prowl. saving the like 10 seconds it would have taken to just turn around and cast some heals. He Kotaku probably claims speedrunner. Feels, he probably feels a little bit behind after doing that stuff and then going back down to Leviathan spot and not getting anything out of it. Um, that said, particularly having taken that grind. And then um, with Kobahi clearing out so many key item spots and then gaining essentially the levels that he would have needed anyways uh, yeah. through doing so, um, it that decision to grind early could uh, could actually put Rivers behind here. Um, Kobahi checking out that tower key location, our first runner to do so, finds Queen Azura here. Now this is a delightful spot to find her because it's a delightful spot to find most bosses, honestly. Uh, because you could just take it down. Uh, Rivers showing the wrath of a speedrunner looking for the crystal, dropping several nukes down on Demist. And Aizen Tayama finishing up that fight, getting the Earth Crystal. Let's see what he does next. Kirchin, meanwhile, faces off against Leviathan at the Vanilla Wyvern spot. Kobahi, having finished up that Queen Azura fight and cutscene, heads out of the Tower of Babel. Let's see what he picks up. And if it's not the Crystal, will he go to Luka or will he go to the Earth Crystal? Let's watch. Chat asking, does Liver Rivers leave immediately? Um, it's quite possible. However, uh, we're seeing him throw down a save and he may decide to exit. He's tossing those items down. It looks like he's going to keep looking. Yeah. We're going to see about this CPU spot. Meanwhile, Kobahi triggering the Tower of Babel bridge cutscene. And Aizen Tayama heading back to Earth. And let's see what Kobahi gets for his efforts. He gets the crystal value in the Tower of Babel, folks. At the Tower Key, Kobahi has found what he's looking for, and he is heading straight back to that big whale. It's actually the only runner to not have the pan, so there will be a little bit of uh, equalization going on for that reason. Uh, although, actually, Aizen also doesn't have the pan, and he's about to get this Tower Key. Um... And uh, Kirchin has already down. checked the, the top of the tower, so he really doesn't have much catching up to do at all. Correct. Takes the big whale over to the village of Mist. That is some swag right there. Careful you don't crush the villagers. It's actually Derek Mist and um, Plague Spot, I believe, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's correct. Oh, I see in chat. Some, somebody um, in chat. Um, was... Rivers using a Meteo against the CPU, having no doubt calculated some of the damage here and is looking to out-damage CPU before he starts knocking down char characters. Double Meteo, uh, Fusoyan Pound doing those Leap Zemus fight strats. Wow, that is an efficient way to deal with that CPU. Absolutely. Knocking out that is a 20k damage. Fight cleanly finishing up the fight without eating any of those uh any of those uh globe 199s kobahi showing his excitement having found the crystal cycling through his characters with the r button rivers taking a quick save before uh heading down to the next spot um and it looks like we didn't really see cabins or sirens in this speed interesting uh, huh? we did we did see cabins cabins are oh, actually guaranteed cabin. to be in this seed uh, okay uh, but we did not see sirens anywhere for some reason i thought that kobahi was going to open that treasure chest <laughs> not everybody picked up the cabins but they they did exist 
and Aizen Tayama heading to that tower key spot immediately. Um, but Aizen has not checked out the Luka key. Let's see what Aizen ends up doing. Uh, has not gone to the top of the tower yet, I should say. However, Kirchen heading for that tower key spot. Oh my gosh. Oh, and Kirchen has the pass. I've forgotten about that for a moment, so he really doesn't have very far to go at all. How's Kirchen's levels? I guess we'll take a look when he's in this Assure fight. Yeah, let's take a quick oh, look. His levels are actually a little on the low side. Rose only has 2100 health. Hmm. Uh, that is low. That is that is low. Although I, I, I'm i not sure he won't just slap an adamant armor on her and call it a day. That's true. And he does have three mages, um, a good setup for hybrid strats. Well, Palin doesn't have nuke, though, so... Oh, that's a good point. That's a very good point. Hmm. Let's see what he ends up deciding to do. Kobahi taking a quick look at stats before uh, heading down into the core. And Aizen Tayama picking up that crystal. Meanwhile, Rivers is fighting against the Fabul Gauntlet. Yeah. It's a little bit unfortunate for Rivers to uh, be in this situation. Uh, with us knowing, but him not knowing that this is going to be a dud. It is, uh, it is unfortunate sometimes being in the commentator's booth uh, and being in no mode, as it were. Um, Kirchen heading out of the tower. Um, interesting to see Aizen Tayama not head up the Tower of Babel. I believe that's, a, that's him just gambling that if it were there, then, you know, Dot Dun would have happened by now. Fair. Fair. And Kobahi. Entering the Zeromus fight with his party. Oh my gosh, Kirchen picking up that crystal, heading outside of the underground. Oh, I hate landing the airship there. I'm really bad at leaving the underground. <laughs> I have to admit. Kobahi gonna proc <laughs> Zeromus with that crystal. Right, let's see what we have. I'm excited. Let's see who this is. Got plenty of Bacchus warrants for this triple berserker party. Chat pointing out that Kobahi has Avenger for Kane as well. Bacchus Wines, oh my gosh. And we see, oh my gosh, what even is that? Uh, it is Falfumus. I'm sure someone in chat will tell me. <laughs> uh, Falful. Scala, I've seen you in chat. Who is this? Scala. Zeramus has Fury, says Scala Kitty. Oh my gosh. Puexel chiming in with the Fury. This is from the Mario and Luigi games. Thank you very much, oh. Kat. And Kirchen heading down into the... Oh, perhaps going to grind a little bit on some gold dragons. Uh, random encounters. Well, I will admit I have not played Bowser's Inside Story. Mm, I haven't played uh, Super Star Saga or any of that series of Mario and Luigi games, uh, although I hear that they are good. Um, I do like, like, Mario-type RPG games. Um, and Rivers heads back to Earth, gonna check that Mist Dragon spot and no doubt head directly to the Tower Key. Kirchen heading down into the depths, as is in Tayama not too far behind. And it looks like Kirchen won't be able to leverage that pass. Kobahi's Z fight going interestingly. Seeing that Avenger did good use, the Zerk are Zerkin. The nukes are full flying. Why isn't Kirchen leveraging that pass? Uh, I think about that it? he wants to grind a little bit, or, or he's he... forgotten that he got Yeah, it. okay, he is just, he's, he's looking for Luna encounters to grind. That's what I, my initial assumption was. Uh, gonna take a quick save before he does so, of course, and Rivers heading up the tower. With only a level 47 Rosa, I don't blame him. Like, Palom's very close to having nuke. This is a party that's gonna have a hard time with Zeromus without that nuke on Palom. Hmm, I agree. Aizen heading directly to the Z fight. Um, I didn't take a good. I didn't. I didn't really take a take a good look at. Um, 
Aizen's level. Chat pointing out a good question. Um, uh, pointing out that Kirchin could have done some doors on. Uh, yeah, I would have like. I would have. However, Kirchin already I checked the uh, checked the Luka key spot, so it's likely that he considered that, but realized that he would have to dive somewhat deep into the Luka cave, or excuse me, the sealed cave, to get access to those doors. But uh, it's definitely something that I will be asking him in an interview. Um, meanwhile, Kobahi in a tiny bit of trouble here. Uh, Fusoya is down and Rosa is on weak HP, but those Zerkers are still Zerking and doing some impressive amounts of damage. Rosa gets the Cure 4 off, though, pulling him out. And Aizen enters that uh, Zero Miss fight. Now, Aizen does not there's have the, There's the media. And uh, I was about to say, with this kind of party comp, I'm not really concerned with what happens to Fusoya. He really wanted Rosa and some Millionaires. And one third There's the flash. GG. Kobahi. You saved the planet. 143.14 is the official SML time. Delightful. Let's see if we can get Kobahi in for an interview. Meanwhile, uh, uh, Aizen Tayama heads into that Z fight. It looks like he's in good shape levels wise, and Rivers is about to pick up his crystal. Kirchin grinding on some of them gold dragons and using some life potions to get the levels that he feels that he needs to face Zeromus. Um, Aizen Tayama slowing down Fothamus, and, uh, excuse me, I was calling Zeromus Zeromus, but clearly it's, uh, Fothal. Hello, Kobahi. GG to you, sir. Congratulations! So, how do you feel about your run? I actually felt like I didn't play well at all. Uh, I struggled with Ogopogo going to the underground and got a waste of time, but found a second adamant armor. So. That second, yeah. armor, second adamant armor certainly helped. Uh, as did your uh, your uh, you went up to the moon uh, earlier than most of the other runners as well, probably. Uh, that adamant armor may have been a factor in that. Uh, like, for example, Rivers did some grinding before going up there. Um, other runners just were more thorough about uh, upturning every last stone on the blue planet before going up to the moon. Yeah, I figured I might have been a bit behind because of the whole hook thing. So, yeah, definitely having two adamants was, you know, a thing allowing me to go up. Absolutely, that dive into the uh, blonde castle really paid off for you. Uh, and I was going to ask you about uh, how you felt during those Ogo resets. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was, it was unfortunate. Um, however, it looks like uh, your decision to find that Advent armor and go to the moon really paid off. Uh, congratulations, Kobahi. Uh, I believe that puts you at four for four. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah. Congratulations! Look at you. Yeah, oh, that's delightful to see can't say I expected that coming into the tournament. I mean, everyone here is good at the game, so... Absolutely, and you are uh, clearly very good at the game as well. Um, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, not really. I just... I'm glad I was able to finish. I almost called it at 15 minutes, because I've been fighting a flu all day, and all the others said we could reschedule if I felt like it, but I decided to power through, and glad I did. Oh, well that was nice of them, and I'm glad that you powered through too. GG again. Thank you. And good luck with us and the runners. So here we, we have uh, Kirchen and Rivers are getting their transformation on Zeromus at almost exactly the same time, and Aizen is only a few, like, less than a minute ahead of them. So we're really going to see who has the faster Z fight here. Absolutely, and this is a delightful sort of ending to our race. Um, seeing three of our runners in the race at the same time vying for second place, this is uh, really has me on the edge of my seat. Uh, I'm very excited to see how this goes down. Now, Rivers' party is significantly more leveled than the rest of the uh, mm -hmm. runners. Okay. However, um, uh, Aizen Tayama is the only one with three Berserkers. Um, uh, the, these nukers also really can do a lot of damage, so we'll which is, see how yes, they I was handle about to that. that out. Um, uh, the Reflex Strats uh, will no doubt come into play, um, and Aizen using nukes to uh, nerf Zeromus' big bangs. Uh, Rosa with white on Kirchen's screen, and no doubt also will uh, be seeing that on Rivers' screen. Um, this is going to be a fast Z fight all around. Um, let's see how it plays out. 
Uh, this is really quite the race, um, and as expected by our runners, to be all in the same place at about the same time um, really goes to show the level of skill in this uh, this section of our Highway to the Zenith Zone lead. Oh, but uh, Kirchen loses Palin, which is a pretty critical damage dealer for him. Hmm. And that could that could put Rivers ahead here. Eyes and Tayama plugging away at Zeromus. And if his uh if Rivers' Z fight is sufficiently clean, he could even potentially pass Aizen. Hmm, I agree there. Uh I believe so as far as SRL cares, that uh the time is it has to be down to the hundredth of a second. Um I believe there would probably be VOD review involved. But I don't know the actual tournament rules for handling ties, if there are any. Neither do I. Um, All right, Eisen hits his medio phase, so Eisen it looks like he's a phase. little bit ahead of a uh, little bit ahead of Rivers. However, with those reflex strats, it could be that Rivers has gotten the skip. And there, there's the dot done from Eisen Tayama with 148.47. And Rivers at 149.01. GG to you, Aizen Taiyama, and GG again. Wow, that finish. Let's see if we can get our runners in for an interview. Wow. That was Kirchen a close the video phase with a little bit of a, a messy party situation going on, but uh, should be fine. The Cure 4 goes off. Yeah, with an event you don't really need everyone that. alive anymore once Meteo phase starts. And Kirchen finishes with 150.00. close race and again just to sort of repeat myself uh, this really goes to show the skill of the runners involved um this is just absolutely delightful um to have been able to participate in this um ggs to all of our runners um for racing tonight for participating um and uh, i want to give a special thank you to uh, our restreamer tonight penguinator and our tracker zyrak uh thank you both for your hard work uh, we wouldn't be able to do this without you um, we really appreciate it. Um, I also want to give a thank you to RPG Limit Break for uh, hosting us and going out of their way to make us feel at home uh, over here and giving us a place to, to restream. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, and also, I want to thank you, Sil, uh, for commentating with me. Oh, I'm glad to uh, glad to get a chance to commentate. Uh, I had a good time. Thank you. Uh, we're waiting on our runners to... Uh come on the Discord and interview. Uh, <laughs> Very exciting stuff all around. What a what an ending to this match. I just 
it feels uh, I feel very grateful to be able to do this uh, to, to be on the mic for y'all and um, and commentate uh, any of these matches but particularly these kinds um, so I also want to extend one final note of gratitude to all of you in the community uh, you really make this uh, make this this randomizer special to me um, and I'm glad that I can share in this, uh, this lovely game with all of you um, thank you for watching uh, please join us on Discord. Um, ask questions. We're friendly. We're happy to help. Um, there's all sorts of guides and stuff. Um, and if you're interested in playing this casually or even racing it, we've got community races. Um, and we are just really delighted. I'm consistently delighted to have y'all here. Um, see you. Please give our runners a follow. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Um, it, it looks like we uh, haven't been able to get any of our runners in uh, for an interview. Um, so we may, uh, may decide to cut here. Uh, I'm going to wait for a little bit of direction from our league admins. Um, apologies for the uh, volume issues. Uh, but basically, I was saying that y'all are awesome, and thank you, and please play this game with us and join our community. Um, all of you make this worth it for us, and uh, thanks, everyone. All right, we have Rivers McCohen here. Uh, good game. That was a really tight finish. Uh, Eisen had a little bit ahead on you in starting this Roma's fight, but uh, you had higher levels, so we're almost caught up to him. Uh, how did you feel about the, the run in general? Uh, you kind of felt too great noting that you have uh, literally 18 out of 18 key items. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was a lot of fun to uh, 18 of 18 and uh, <laughs> just lose the race that way. Um, but I mean, that's kind of how this goes when you get that early darkness crystal. I knew I was I had to pick a side there. Um, I guess I could have cut out earlier, but uh, I kept finding items that would uh, keep me on on the earth, and I was really hoping to find Siren to be on the ground, and that didn't happen either. All right. Um, were there any? Uh, so that Ogo Pogo fight was actually uh, a big uh, potential trip hazard for our runners. Um, I noticed that you ran into it immediately. Reset. What was on your mind there? I had no idea what the fight was going to be. I wanted to make sure that I could uh, equip myself optimally for that because you only get one chance to add an armor. And once I saw that it was Ogo, I was, saying, I was thinking, okay, well, we got to put this on Kane now. we got to boost his damage as much as we can, berserk him, and then he'll carry us through this fight. And that kind of uh, forced my hand in some of the decisions for the rest of the run. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what did that, what decisions did that carry on affecting the fact that you had the adamant, had the adamant armor essentially locked on Kane? Um, mostly that I didn't want to take a crack at Dark Knight Tiesel. I, uh, had that pop up early. I, could, I thought about doing it. I thought about uh, sliding that admin onto Yang so he'd have enough speed to tier three himself up over and over again. But uh, I just didn't want to do it and I didn't want to flip it later either. So it made some fights a little bit interesting, but you know, that's it's better that you get through than it is. And you know, then you just have to play the the mind games with it than uh, <laughs> being forced to just sit there at Ogo and eat death after death after death. Uh, another thing we saw you do is uh, the towards the end of the seed, when you knew that uh, you were starting to check all the one-off spots, you were very aggressively resetting whenever you saw something that wasn't a key item uh, to just even for, like, you, you reset out of the white spear when you got it off of the Leviathan spot. Uh, to get back to the overworld quicker. And then uh, even more in, uh, conspicuously, when you got the Avenger sword from uh, 
the wyvern spot, you reset to the wyvern save point. Uh, were you really just looking to save those, like, five seconds of walking or less? I was looking to save the magic points. I only had one cabin at that point. So oh. I, I thought that if I could uh, keep resetting off that one save, that I could at least keep Fu uh, full power to take care of whatever nasty thing I found down here. Because I knew that there was potential of, like, finding gold bears. I knew we could run into evil walls. So I was a little bit uh, fun to play a little bit safe there. All right. Well, it looks um, like it, it was uh, certainly interesting to watch, Rivers. Uh, I, and you answered my question already about uh, uh, not taking on Dark Knight Cecil at Azura. Um, I was delighted to see that you had had the pass. Uh, that was really, really happy for me. Uh, I felt really happy seeing that. Um, both Kirchen and Aizen Tayama were in their Z fights just as you were entering it. And it was really just epic to watch. Uh, I highly recommend that all of you go and watch the VOD. <laughs> Uh, because it was really, really cool to see. Yeah, I'm glad we could put on a show for you guys. And, uh, you know, what was it? Three runners finishing in like less than a minute or something. That's that's pretty rare. It's pretty mm-hmm. great. Yeah, it was delightful to watch. Thank you so much for running. Sure. Uh, you guys want to talk to you, Kirch, who's in here now? Yeah, yeah I would love to. Uh, so, Kirchen, uh, the first thing I want to bring up is uh, the Ogopogo fight that uh, was very much a tripping point for the for all the runners. Uh, how did you how how did you feel? How did you handle that? Uh, do you have anything to t- say about that that fight? Uh, I didn't feel like it was too bad for me. I got lucky. Um, I kind of gambled on Palum saving the day, so I put the adamant on armor on him before it. So, a couple of quakes was enough to. A couple of kicks and a couple of cane jumps was enough to kind of overcome the HP before he got me. Adamant yeah, I noticed you. Yeah, the Adamant Quake even triggering those blazes, but uh, you were able to just soak enough damage that you kind of got through with just Kane and Talon alive. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And, uh, yeah, it's kind it of was delightful to see, spot. honestly. Yeah. I really enjoyed watching it, Kirchen. Uh I have a question for you also. Um, uh, it was re- uh, raised in chat. Um, when you saw that crystal at the tower key, how come you didn't dive into the Luca key, into the the sealed cave, and do a couple of doors, and then use the pass rather than um, going up into the lunar subterranean and fighting against dragon random encounters? Uh, was it because you felt like you couldn't find the doors fast enough since you'd already opened some of them? I, I opened so many, and I know I still needed like I think like four or five levels at that point. So even though I had 10 KIs, I figured I could just get dragons on the way. And so I'm kind of already running down there and the grind would finish up in front of it anyway. So right. probably a miscalculation, but I kind of figured, you know, this head to the moon. Part of it also was, you know, I was like, oh, there's the crystal. Let's get out of here. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, your, your, your get up and go was over on the big whale. So you got up and went. Yeah. Got to, got, got to get nuke and white and get out of here. Yeah. I totally understand that. I totally understand that. Well, how how do you feel overall? Uh, feels good. I actually, it's funny. I'm really proud of my fourth place finishes. I think those are <laughs> races I'm most proud of. But uh, not a very interesting race. It was uh, fun to be so close to so many great racers. Like even just finishing near them is kind of uh, high praise, I guess, for myself and for them because it's just it's just great to be close. To, I, that's why I said at the start of the race. I think that's a delightful perspective, Kirchen. Um, and particularly, I want to point out your skill as well. Like you were seconds to like next to these racers. So like it, the 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 factor is just like a tiny decision here or a tiny decision there. Like you are a very skilled runner of this game, and it's always a delight uh, watching you not only race the game, but also like in how you uh, interact with the community and how you like think about the game and talk about it. It's uh, it's really delightful to engage with. Ah, oh, thank you. I think it actually bit me this race because I tried to do the uh, quick kill for Plague, but um, apparently his relative agility was zero, so countdown just lasts forever. So sad face. So I kind of sat there doing nothing for a while, and then had to scramble to fix it. Any um, any final thoughts, Kirch? Uh, eighteen eight out of eighteen. I'd do it again. Ah, uh, oh, thank delightful. Thank delightful. Thanks for thanks for explaining why the uh, the countdown didn't work. By the way, for that fight. Yeah, it's a. Uh, interesting thing with final fantasy for uh relative speed but uh, i hit that with a couple of bosses trying to do quick kill strats and you know if you're too slow then their buffs never wear off including countdown hmm good to know good to know my friend well 
thank you very much. No, and GG you. to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, good luck with the playoffs, other uh, racers, and uh, I hope I think Aizen's still in the bubble, so I hope you get in. Um, I believe Aizen is looking pretty good after that second place finish. Uh, Hooray! It's not a guarantee. Yes, so he's may, may he's likely going to have to uh, deal with a tiebreaker play in, uh, but it's it's not a sure thing. Uh, it depends on the results of the final race. However, his uh, Z score is very good, so he's uh, he's in a good spot for that. Uh, okay, gotcha. Well, yeah, good luck, uh, Kabahi. You know, every Aizen and uh, whoever that Rivers McCown guy is. Kind of saw him around chat once or twice, but don't really know much about him. What a lovely race, everyone. Thank you to everybody for coming out. Uh, thanks again to our runners, to my uh, lovely co-commentator, uh, Silverfire, to our tracker, Zyrak, and to uh, Penguinator, our restreamer, to RPG Limit Break, and to all of you. Yeah, unfortunately, we won't have Aizen in here for an interview because he has work in the morning. So that will be everything. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And let's uh, let's figure out where we're going. <laughs> and we are going to be visiting Holy Smith. All of you have a lovely night. Bye bye now. Good night.